Tonight on the program, I hope you're being strengthened and blessed. Tonight we're going to be in Revelation chapter 6 where I want us to uh, focus on, number one, the introduction of the Antichrist. And we'll probably get the first four horse riders out of the way. But that's where I want to focus to be tonight. I want you to see who the Antichrist really is, what the Bible actually says about him, especially in his appearing, his being revealed, whenever he actually enters into and onto the world stage. Now, as I've shared with you many times before, the Antichrist is not going to just come and be a big surprise to the world. The Antichrist system is present now. It's the developing world order and all those that's behind it. I've shown you passages of scripture in the past couple of weeks where the Bible told us that the spirit of Antichrist was already here, that there were many, in fact, as John said, that there was many Antichrist already here. And I had shared with you the fact that Antichrist's spirit entered the world and the desire to conquer the world the day that the devil entered in or was let into the Garden of Eden. In chapter 6, what we see is the introduction, the coming forth of that wicked, of that evil one. And there's some, uh, there's some definitions that's locked into the words that describes him and things that's happening to him that I think gives us a world of information as to what we're looking at and what we can expect of this person that the Bible refers to as Antichrist. So, once again, chapter 6 brings in the Great Tribulation period. It is where it's introduced. The Great Tribulation period begins the moment that the Antichrist is given power. We have saw the churches in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3. And then we saw that the Bible said after the churches was dealt with, John heard a voice say, come up hither. From that moment on, the church is never mentioned again. And they're not mentioned again because they're not here anymore after that point. Now we go into after the church is gone, after the church age has ended, and now we enter into what is called the tribulation age, or we could call it the age of Antichrist. Here's what the Bible says concerning his appearance. And I think this is important. It says in verse 1, chapter 6, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it was the noise of thunder, and one of the beasts saying, Come and see. And the thunder is something that sounds like thunder. The Lamb is the Lord Jesus Christ. The seals that he is opening are the sealed judgments. The first set of judgments and all the judgments in the book of Revelation comes in groups of seven. The first set of judgments are called the sealed judgments. The Lord will break the seal on judgment number one, tell it to John, John will write it. He will then break the seal on the second judgment and so forth and so on. Now, this is without question. This book of Revelation, I have little to no doubt, is the book that was given to Daniel in the Old Testament. Daniel said he read the book, but he could not understand it. The Lord told Daniel then to take the book and to seal it up. And in so many words, he told Daniel that it's not for you nor those of your time, but it is for they that will come, those of another time. So Daniel received the book of Revelation. He read it, but he could not understand it. Daniel then told us in the 12th chapter of Daniel that in the last days, the days of Antichrist, the system as well as the appearing of the actual Antichrist, that there would be an increase, or in fact, an explosion of knowledge. This knowledge would translate into technology. So the book of Revelation is a book written concerning technology. You see, it was some 3,000 years ahead of Daniel. They was telling us for a long time that knowledge increased once every 1,500 years, that it doubled once every 1,500 years. 
Then it doubled, one, it doubled every 800 years and then every 500 years. They're telling us now that knowledge is doubling now every six to eight months. So without a question, without question, we are in a technological explosion. We are in what Daniel clearly said was coming, an increase or an explosion of knowledge. Now, this book, Revelation, was written based on that knowledge, the explosion of that knowledge, that knowledge being here. And so Daniel, 3,000 years ago, couldn't read anything in this book and it registered in his brain as coherent. He had no idea what it was talking about because it was talking about technologies far advanced. And there was no way Daniel could wrap his mind around it nor understand a single word of it. So God said, seal the books. So now we're seeing the introduction of the Antichrist and the lamb comes forth and the lamb breaks the seal. There was no one in the heavens, no one in the earth, nowhere that was worthy, the Bible said, to loose the seals, but the lamb of God. So now the technological explosion is here, and now we have the arrival of Antichrist. With a noise of thunder, we're seeing that as the beast comes forth to show, and that word beast in verse one simply means living creatures. So living creatures, and I have no idea what all is in heaven, and nobody else does either. But these are living creatures when it's talking about the four beasts. It literally means the four living creatures. Let's read verse one again. And I saw the lamb open one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So the Bible tells us here that the Antichrist appears on a white horse. Now, understanding clearly, when you're dealing with the book of Revelation, you're dealing with a book of symbolism. When we take the word white and we define it in the Greek language, and the Greek language is a very precise language, when we define the word white, what does it mean that he is coming in on a white horse. Well, the word white in the Greek definition means light, bright, brilliant. In other words, this is talking about a light. But again, we know that light in this sense is being used pertaining to knowledge, intelligence, revelation. He's coming in as a revealer. He's coming in as a light bearer. He's coming in as light, brilliant, and bright. He's coming in as a hope to the world and one who appears brilliant and bright. The definition goes on to say dazzling, as of the garments of angels and those that's exalted into splendor and, in splendor and into a heavenly state. So you see how the man is appearing. But you must understand this. Many people have said that the Antichrist was going to be so much like Jesus that he would deceive the whole world into believing that he was Jesus. That is incorrect. The Antichrist will be nothing like Jesus. Fact of the business is the Antichrist will be just the opposite of Jesus. Whatever Jesus was is exactly what the Antichrist will not be. Whatever Jesus preached is exactly the opposite of what the Antichrist will preach. What Jesus did will be just directly the opposite of what the Antichrist will do. He comes in on this white horse, dazzling, brilliant. But who is it that he's mesmerizing? 
who is it that he appears so brilliant, so bright, so light, so dazzling to the world? To the world who is here, who has been rejected by God, not taken up in the rapture of the church. It is those in the world that has already received the Antichrist spirit before the Antichrist himself even arrives. Please understand what I'm telling you. The Bible makes it clear that the Antichrist spirit is already here and many Antichrists are already among us. The world has already and is presently receiving the system of Antichrist. It's debauchery, it's destruction, it's sexual perversions, it's drug addictions and legalization of, of dope, of legalization of sorcery, legalization of perversion. It is the Antichrist system and everything the Bible said was going to happen under him. And how much of the world today is receiving that system? Even how many in the church world today are still walking with that system? Multitudes. These are the people who has already received what the Bible refers to as the simple, the ignorant, and the stupid. That's what the definition means, the simple. Much of the world has already received the work of the many antichrists here, which means they will then receive the work of the antichrist that comes because they're being groomed and built right now for that kingdom and for that world leader. So to those particular people, he will be dazzling, brilliant, and bright. He will be the white horse. He'll make more sense and he'll be more educated than anybody these people has ever seen. But what did Jesus tell us about bright, light, and brilliant? He said that if the light that is in you, and remember, this is talking about knowledge. If the light that is in you, Jesus said, be darkness, how great is the darkness? Jesus telling us there that there are two forms of light. There is the light, and then there is the light or the knowledge of darkness. There is the knowledge of light, that in Christ. There is the knowledge of darkness, that in sin and Antichrist. There is a way, the Bible says, that seemeth right to a man. He believes he has knowledge. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus is telling us there's dark light. People can become very knowledgeable, which then means they can become very filled with light. But the light is not the truth. Like those that learned of the light of Jim Jones back in the day. And all that light got those people was some poison Kool-Aid and dead. It's like the light that uh, Charles Manson was shining forth. I mean, his groupies that was around him believed that man was the most brilliant man they had ever heard talk. But his light was a false light. His knowledge was a lie. And all his light brought to, to those was life in penitentiary and death to others. The Antichrist is going to be light to those that's already received him. This ignorant mass that you are seeing now in our midst. These Supreme Court justices this lady who sat there before Congress and now on the highest court in the land could not answer a question, can you define what a woman is and a Supreme Court justice? Sat there before Congress and said, no, I can't. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? 
Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? You are dealing with pure demonism. Now you can understand why this man who is going to be the heart and soul of this bunch is going to be, at least in their eyes, so dazzling, so bright, and so brilliant. And this is in the definition. Of the whitening color of a ripening grain. Now what is that telling us? Whenever the grain, the fields, what you have sown, once it comes to the point that it's ready now to be picked, harvested, it turns white. It's the whitening of the grain when the grain ripens. Concerning the Antichrist, the Bible made it absolutely clear to us that what God was going to do was that he was going to allow the earth to fully mature, to fully ripen. What the tribulation period is, is that the entire earth in its sin is going to become ripe. That's why Jesus is going to tread the wine press. He is going to wait for it to ripen. And by the time Antichrist gets here, the world of Noah, when men's heart was only on evil, continually, the Bible said, will be nothing compared to this season now that the entire earth in its sin, its rebellion, its perversion, its godliness or godlessness is going to become ripe. In the name white, in the word white, the white horse rider, Antichrist, it speaks of the ripening of this grain. Listen to what the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time has come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. This is in the book of Revelation. The angel is thrusting in his sickle because the earth has now become ripe. Ripened with what? Ripened with everything I just mentioned a while ago. It's not just now a sinful world. We're not just now dealing with people off track. We are already in a time of demonic perversion. Stuff that we've never seen. Natures that we've never seen personalities that we've never seen. It's demons. This world is fully becoming demonized, the world, in a way of which it's never been done before. So the earth will become ripe. And how close are we to that? We're knocking on heaven's door, my friend. We're sitting right at it. It's ripe now. We're just awaiting for that evil one to appear in his fake and false, bright, light, dazzling self. Verse 2 then says that he has a bow. The word bow comes from a Greek word, and it means toxin. And it's not just the bow. Whenever this particular word is used, it means both the bow and the arrow. So the Antichrist, the man of peace, the man preaching peace, the dazzling, brilliant, bright one, preaching peace, comes armed with bow and arrows. But this word here in the Greek is toxin. And what happened was the archers, it was the word used that the archers used in Greek. They would, tip, they, would, they would dip the tips of their arrows in poison, deadly poison. And it would become called toxicon. It was the poison-tipped arrow. So what this is telling us is that the Antichrist is a man of poison. The bow and the arrow that he has casting into the earth is nothing but poison. This system 
poisons the mind. That's what it's doing now. God only knows what it'll be in the days of Antichrist. This system, this Antichrist system is poisoning the minds, poisoning the souls, poisoning the earth. It is this spirit of Antichrist that the Bible tells us will unleash famines, will unleash pestilence, will unleash plagues. It's what Jesus said he was going to do. Now, we living in this technological age Daniel spoke of and promised was coming, we know now what this stuff is. We know now as we watch them and see clearly that they are in laboratories splicing together viruses for the purpose of seeing how many human beings the virus would kill. Well, all you have to do now is create one and turn it loose. You think that that hadn't already been, been done? They're able to take these viruses and they can actually program the viruses to where they just kill people with a certain genetic code, certain blood types, even eye color. That's where we are today. Now, do you think that these brute beasts as we see pure demonization taking place now that you have never seen, personalities arriving you have never known, even down at your, on your corners of your street, much less in laboratories in China and everywhere else, putting these viruses together. You think they're not going to be used? Most definitely they are going to be used and they're going to start using them on a massive scale in Revelation chapter 9. Remember, the Lord said that he was going to destroy them that destroy the earth. Everything taking place in Revelation chapter 6 on through the tribulation period is man, it is these distorted, demon-possessed souls that is destroying it from the water. The Bible said after they unleashed their nuclear weapons and all this mess that they're going to do, that the waters became poison. The waters became wormwood, the Bible said. Wormwood is poison. And certainly, most likely, radioactive fallout point is. This bow that this Antichrist possesses is a toxicon. It is a bow and an arrow, and it is the poisoned tipped arrow. He knows nothing but death because it's who his father is. They're going to bring nothing but death because that's who their father is. It's not complicated and it's not hard to understand where we're at and where we're going. So, real quick now, let me finish the four horses. You'll have to read it tonight yourself. Once this Antichrist that we have described now comes onto the world stage, preaching peace, brilliant, bright light, proclaiming that he wants peace, harmony, and unity. But the Bible says in verse 3, the Bible says that he comes forth conquering and to conquer. There's the motive. That's what he's really all about. This is why we were warned of the word of God. When they cry peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come and none shall escape. Well, whenever this Antichrist comes in his false light, Whenever he comes into the world seeking to conquer it, he's going to be resisted. So the second horse rider is the red horse. The red horse is war and took peace from the earth. And a great sword was given to him, a weapon. Then the Bible tells us following that war, it will be the black horse. And the black horse is famine. They've got the scales balancing the wheat and the payments of it 
taken from biblical days, means that you'll literally pay a day's wage for a loaf of bread. You see, it will be trouble such as the world has never known. So the war under the red horse will be a war like you've never known. All wars causes famine. But when you've got the worst war there's ever been, you're going to have the worst famine there's ever been worldwide. And then following that one is a pale horse. Death and hell set on it and the Bible said one fourth of the earth was destroyed. So not throughout the whole run of the tribulation period. The Bible tells us in the beginning stages of the tribulation period, one fourth of the earth is going to be destroyed. So there's 8 billion people here. 2 billion people, not million. 2 billion people are going to die in the beginning of the tribulation period. This is the reason why the prophet Isaiah said, in that day, man shall become as scarce as fine gold. I'm amazed how fast time flies. I look in the mirror that tells no lies. There's a clock in my mind that moves all the time Wasted hours counting lines in my face This life 